Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I just picked up a jelly plate. I'm so excited. I was in um, a fine art store and I grabbed one. I've been playing with it for about 20 minutes now and I am having so much fun that I thought I would record a quick video on some of the techniques I'm playing with. Now I'm sure it's nothing new. I have seen a lot of jelly plate um, prints before, um, but I was just so thrilled that I wanted to share them with you and maybe give you some ideas or inspiration. Now I'm in the trailer right now. I've got the windows and everything closed because my husband's uh, working on the house out there. Uh, so it's pretty noisy um, and pretty dark because all the curtains and everything are drawn. So if you hear some weird machinery sounds, that is uh, the machinery outside. And then if I'm casting shadows, I'm sorry, doing the best with what I've got. But uh, I wanted to show you some prints that I just did real quickly. So here is um, a fern uh, with acrylic paints. I'm using acrylic paints. And this is a piece of muslin, which I thought had that really nice kind of tea bag delicate effect. So there's those, and uh, this is just experimental, right? I'm just kind of playing back and forth. And so we're gonna do, they're not even dry yet. That's how excited I am to share. Um, so I'm gonna try a couple more, show you how I did these little techniques and uh, we'll have some fun. So even leftovers, uh, leftover bits and pieces, I just kind of found different papers to print on. I love this one. This one turned out really neat. We're gonna do something like that. I also tried printing on um, what I would call a really cheap kind of, I don't think it's linen, I think it's more like a muslin. Uh, so it's a its a loose weave, but it's got a little bit, it's a bit tighter than the, um, the I guess this is muslin here. No, this is, what's this called? Like a cheesecloth was the first one. Let me find it again. So the cheesecloth is really transparent, real thin. I'll put a piece of paper behind it. So it's it's very light, thin weave when this one is a tighter weave. And I think it's a muslin. Muslin, not muslin. Muslin. <laughs> uh, so yeah, some more successful than others when it comes to the printing. Where'd those ones go? So this was really fun. This was with a little bit of water. And uh, I don't have a brayer, I only have a paintbrush, but they have some really fun eco dyed effects, which I really like because it's a lot faster than the actual eco dye process. So let's play. Let's play with some, uh, some paint. I'm only going to use the two colors. So I have um, a burnt umber and I have a unbleached titanium white that I've been using and some specimens from the garden here. So I keep going off camera because my camera's really far away from the front here. So let's throw some titanium white down and I'm gonna just paint my jelly paint plate. Now I've never had one of these before, but I, like I said, I've, I've seen some YouTube videos lately and they do some really fun, bright, colorful things. And um, I tried it with some ink, spraying some ink, but I didn't like it as much. Uh, I find it really hard to control, so I have to experiment with that some more. Uh, playing with these spray uh, alcohol inks and uh, distressed oxides, maybe spraying or dripping some alcohol could be a really fun experiment as well. But as of right now, I'm really having fun with just playing with a couple of these two colors. And I picked a couple of leaves from uh, my garden outside, just some random kind of weeds. So I think this one is actually off that s a smoke bush that I just planted because I love the shape of it and I love all the veins in it. It's got so much beautiful veining that I can't resist it. I'll show you in a second what I mean. Like look how pretty those veins are. Just they're so gorgeous. I hope you can see it. Okay so I'm just gonna and I like the simplified look. So later, once I get more practice in, I might experiment a little with um, several plants, but right now I'm just sticking to the single one. And it has some muslin here. No, this is not muslin, this is cheesecloth. Keep getting them mixed up. And I'm gonna just, so you can see how it 
how the loose weave gets distorted pretty easy. And that's just the nature of this weave. And I'm going to put the wider piece at the top because it gives it a little bit more space. I'm just gonna tap it down and then I'm gonna grab a piece of tissue paper. And just so, as you can see, you get dirty fast. But that's when you know you're having fun. You know, you get your hands dirty, experiment, play with it. And, you know, you you kind of discover new things. So when I did this first time, I really love how the cheesecloth left texture behind on the jelly plate. And that's something I didn't even think about. So we'll do that there. And then we'll pull this off. I'm just gonna drop it on top of this paper so you can see it. And it is getting dark in here. So see how light and delicate that is? Just really, really pretty, fun results. And again, the color possibilities and all that stuff. Just love that idea. So now what I was saying before, you can see that there's um, texture left behind from the, I'll try and move it close. Even my old leaf print is still in there, look. That's kind of cool. Um, but there's a really neat weave texture left on the paint behind, which is something I want to try and catch. So I'm going to do it on, I want to remove as much paint as possible. I'm just going to use some of this linen paper here. And this is a really cheap linen paper, um, but it's a really nice color. It's kind of like a soft cream color, which I like. I'm going to put that on and pull off the remainder of whatever's on this plate. And I like to go right around the edge of the jelly. Kind of creates a little frame. All right. And pull that off. So there wasn't as much paint left behind on this one, but still okay. And then we'll pull the plant off. And a nice light, thin result there. So not as much paint, but still really fun to cut up and use as a botanical piece. So let's play again, because I'm addicted. All right, so maybe what I'll do is give this a bit of a clean. I'm just gonna mist it with a bit of water here. Because like I said, this is, oops, completely missed. This is the first time I've ever used one of these plates. And uh, I don't know like how often you're supposed to clean them or what but I think I'm gonna like the layers of mess. <laughs> like the messier, the better. That might just be me. So let's do the reverse. Let's do a dark, let's do the burnt umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber. Yeah, burnt sienna is more red. Well, let's throw that on there. And so if you had a brayer, it would go a lot smoother and a lot more even, but I don't. So I treated myself to this jelly plate, which I'm gonna get a lot of use out, I can tell you. <laughs> Dinner's not getting made tonight because I'm having too much fun. <laughs> All right, and then this one's got the light on it already. So maybe we'll just add a little bit more light to that to make sure. And then I, have, I actually found this copper. Maybe we'll, I don't know what I'm doing. So it might work, might not. Put the copper on there, maybe. Let's see if I can brush that on. Ooh, I think, I think it's empty. Well, darn, it is empty. Look at that. I was all excited about finding that copper, and I don't have any other copper. Okay, well that was a bummer. I set up myself up for failure on that one. Where is? Uh, there's more brushes. Yes because that would have been really cool, but clearly I don't have any now, but that's okay. Let's use the white. I could probably look for some metallic in my bucket and I'm sure I'll have something. So again, just a single, just a single flower or petal, whatever you want to call it, leaf. And this time we'll do a little sheet here, paper. And 
and let's see what we get. And it's it's kind of fun because you don't know what you're gonna get. And I love that part. Experimental is my thing. I'll pull this guy off. That kind of looks cool too. <laughs> So I didn't get a lot of leaf definition that I had too much paint. Lesson learned, but still usable, still fun. So let's print this guy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch it or not. It might just smear into one image and lose the definition, but I've got to give it a go see what we get. Oh, that print turned out much better. There we go. That's kind of fun, right? And it created its own halo. Love that. I'm making a mess here. I get stuff everywhere. I'm very messy. Okay, let's try something else. So, I think uh, we'll smear this out before it dries. Let's try a different plant add a little bit. I'm so bummed about that copper. I was so excited when I saw it. Let's see if I can reach my paints from here. It's very tight, tight quarters in here right now. And I keep bringing more stuff in like this jelly plate. <laughs> Alright. I don't have a lot of space here. Let's see. I think I can reach my paints. Oh, I can. Acrylic paint set here. All right, bear with me. Oh, what's that? That one is, that's gold. That might work. I was hoping for copper. Red oxide would be nice. And there's a burnt sienna. All right, well, let's just play with the gold. Okay, let's put that back. Let's see if I can get the gold to print. All right, so I got some more specimens over here. So here's another top of the fern we could try using, or maybe just a single fern petal, something like that. Let's try it. Let's give her a go, and let's try it with the gold. Assuming this hasn't dried out, you can see I have a lot of paint that sits around for quite some time. Another paintbrush. Oops. Am I still in, starting to sneak off camera again? Let's try and put it straight so I don't drive you crazy. There. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's a lot of paint. <laughs> okay, let's, let's find a piece of paper to work with here. All right, don't need that much paint. Now this is gonna be pretty transparent, this gold. Gold tends to be quite transparent when it you paint with it. So let's move that over there so we can reuse that piece. I have paint everywhere. Good times. Okay, let's do it on a piece of paper first. Let's see what we get. Let's see if that gold transfers. It might have been too much paint on there. So it probably won't be a very clean print. And that's the nice thing about the brayer is you can really control the amount of paint you put on. So yeah, it's definitely way too much paint. It's oozed out, I can see. It's a little too much for me, but that's okay. So that's our first print, which wasn't too successful. But I think there's a nice amount of gold left on there. So let's, let's print what's left on this. Because again, you don't know what you're gonna get. And you're just using cheap scraps here. You know, use whatever you got until you get the hang of it. That's kind of fun. It's not a, like, obviously a detailed 
print. It's a little distorted, but it's still got some really fun reflective textures in there that could be used for, you know, like a, a decorative focal point. So I'm just gonna move that one. I'm gonna repaint this. Let's move this around. Get that brown back on there. Actually, let's add some titanium white to it and create like a, a light brown. Let's see how that looks with the leftover gold. Kind of like an uneven background as opposed to a solid colored background. Ooh. So let's kind of have some fun blending your paints here and use up the paint that I squeezed out. And then maybe we could do a gold background. That could be fun too. Let's try that. I have a very tiny desk, very tiny. Let's try it. May work, may not. As you can see, this is gonna be my new obsession for a little while. And it's gonna go well with my gardening journal that I'm gonna start soon. So, and all this stuff has come out of the garden, which is nice. So, just experiment with some colors that I might like, some colors that I don't like. It's kind of fun. This is a little disappointing here, but I like the background. I'm not sure I like the um, cream color with the gold. Uh, I find this cold and this really warm, which I'm not a big fan of. So, with that being said, let's try one more here. I don't want to keep you all day. I'll be um, playing all day until <laughs> I get something I really, really, really love. And I've got a few that I really like, don't get me wrong. But it is, you know, I just, like I said, I just got it. It's very experimental for me and just trying to find my water here. And, um, that's why I thought I'd take you along. So if you've never done jelly painting prints, um, this is a fun way to see how somebody else is also learning how to use it. And also making a mess and realizing it's okay to be messy. Let's put this gold paint down, the one that I had before. Let's see, try and use it up. I think we'll try a different leaf. I find these are maybe just a little too close together. So this is definitely going to be quite transparent, which could have a pretty cool effect. Let's go to, what else have I got? I have another smoke. Maybe do a small one. Yeah, all right, let's try that. Even though it's a similar leaf that I did already, we can still try something. Maybe put the big one. Let's do that. So we have two prints on one paper. I gotta find my, I lost my um, dark brush. Oh, <laughs> just got stuck everywhere. All right, let's wipe this paint off here real quick. Okay, my dark brown, my burnt umber. Let's put some on here. So again, the brayer would you be able to control the amount of paint and that is what I'm noticing is quite important. So you wanna coat it, but you kinda wanna wipe enough off that it's not ridged so that it doesn't cover all those details. So this one, you can see, has too much paint on it. So I'll wipe some of that off. Let's put that one there. My fingers are sticky. I'll move this over. Hopefully I'm in frame still. Let's grab a piece of paper. And print. And a nice clean brayer over top. You can really get pull the details out. Would be nice, but in my case, where you've got fingers, dirty fingers. <laughs> I 
All right. Oh, I like the gold. That's fun. That's really pretty. I really like the details in this one. And I'm loving the gold background. So those will make really nice little additions. So now let's see what we've got left over to play with. So there's a gold one here and a brown. So maybe we'll pull, we'll pull these two off and print these. Maybe uh, we could spray something and see what happens. So this is a vintage photo, distressed oxide. I don't know, might ruin it, might not. Give it a little bit of texture. The thing I don't like about the sprays is you can't control the amount of spray that comes out. So I've done a video tutorial on how to paint with a paintbrush and using those distressed offside inks because they have some really beautiful effects. But the spray part turns me off of them because you really can't control the amount of spray and where it goes. So yeah, it ended up there's a little bit of detail in here. I don't know if you can see it with the veining. But still some fun paper that could get ripped up and used into something. It's distorted the leaves a little bit. So unfortunately, we didn't get the leaves on that one. All right. So we've got two leaves here with gold on it. Let's print those. Just keep printing. This will be the last one, I promise. The video will be like 12 days long. Might as well just see if we can grab that detail. Oh look, more prints. <laughs> so that, that gave us a little bit, but let's maybe go again on the same piece of paper with the dark. And just, just keep printing. That's pretty. Oh, I really like those two. So you can see, you can just keep going and going and going. And then what's fun is I would probably let these dry with paint on them. And uh, I don't know if I have the blue ones handy. I don't. But I've done um, a little bit of printing earlier on wood using leaves, not the jelly plate. But I, uh, like I said, I really love these um, smoke trees. Uh, I just love the veining in them. But when the leaves dry, they kind of crinkle, but they kind of stay leathery. So you could do, you could use them for crafts, you know? I mean, how pretty is that? I couldn't, I can't throw those out. Oh, the things I collect. So there's, uh, just to give you some fun ideas on how to use this little jelly plate using just two colors and uh, getting the results, like these really fun, different results. And I'm sure, again, this is nothing new. It's been done a lot, but for me, it's new. And some will be successes and some not so much. And uh, and then some of them you'll just absolutely love. And try and let them dry. See the, see the difference in the prints right there. Um, trying to catch the details and something very simple. Now you can always draw the veins in. It doesn't end there. You can sew veins in. You can just keep adding and adding and adding. And that's what I love about playing with different textiles. So here's that first one we did with the, what's that stuff called again? Cheesecloth. Another really delicate look. Another delicate one. And these are just playing with the plate over and over again, the way we just did. And again, not knowing what you're gonna get. I really love this one. This one is, it's not a perfect detail, you know, it, but it's, it's implied. You can see it. You can, you know where you recognize what it is, but it's so delicate and natural and kind of old, which really appeals to me. And I love this one too, because it looks like an eco dye. You can see the brush strokes. So I think with this one, I sprayed water in and uh, the water mixed with the ink that was already on the jelly plate, plus the paint created this kind of, uh, it kind of repelled away from the, the jelly plate. Uh, like an ink would do or a, a, an alcohol would do with water. Here's one I printed with the uh, linen cloth, which um, I had printed the, with the linen cloth first. It was probably one of these brown ones back here, this one. And then after that, it left the, the linen 
texture behind. So now the paper also looks like linen. I don't know if you can capture that detail or not. So cool. This one was like sprayed ink. So I printed it and then I sprayed some of that um, distressed oxide in before I printed it and it came up with some really fun textures. And this one, I'll put this piece behind it so you can see it. This is a, another really delicate type of um, cheesecloth. This was the very first one I did and I didn't paint the leaf. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I should put some paint on the leaf. So again, learning, right? Still has some really fun effects but now I want to take it a next step further. I can sew details in there. I can draw it with a pencil. I can paint another leaf and print it right over top. Like it's just the possibilities are just so endless. And I think that's what's so appealing about this jelly plate. If you don't like, if you don't mind getting your hands dirty, you don't mind playing and experimenting, you will just love using one of these jelly plates. And uh, be warned though, it is it's pretty addictive so there's a that kind of looks like a wood grain which is fun it is a really nice impression and again so like for example I could go over this with a thin can I do it and have some gold with a thin like a real thin wash of gold and just take it to another level and just scrub some gold paint on there and now I've changed it so you know, even though once it's printed, it's not finished. You can keep playing. There's no rules here. Here's one that's more monochromatic. And I really love this one. This one, I, I fell in love with this one, so I think I'd like a little bit of gold in there. Or you can take your, once they're dry, you can take your, um, like your distressed oxide and muddy it up, vintage it up even more but I'm into this gold reflective stuff right now. Kind of like a gold leaf. You could take your spray now and spray it. I could keep going and going. So there's a little bit of gold on there. So even though you've printed it, you can just keep layering and have some fun. Really have some fun with different papers, different fabrics, different colors, different leaves. And uh, I mean, it doesn't even have to be a leaf. Like you can use coins you can use whatever whatever theme journal you're working on anyways I'm rambling I'm going off on a tangent which I tend to do when I'm excited about something <laughs> so anyways that's uh that's today's project something fun easy hope you give it a try hope you have fun get your hands dirty and we'll see you again soon take care everyone bye